We'll continue studying the Lancaster model. We are looking at armed conflict between Red Army and Blue Army. We are neglecting any kind of operational loss, and we are assuming that neither army is receiving reinforcements. We found that the origin is an unstable saddle with an eigenvector here and an eigenvector here. And trajectories follow the eigenvectors in the familiar way. And either this trajectory reaches this point and blue army is wiped out, or this trajectory reaches this point and red army is wiped out. And obviously I've only drawn two sample trajectories. There are an infinite number of them, but they all end with either red army or blue army being wiped out. So which happens? Can we predict which army will win? If we're given information about their sizes and their effectiveness. Let's cut to the chase. These curves look like hyperbola and they are hyperbola. They are, in particular, hyperbola in their standard forms. This hyperbola has a vertex on the b-axis. This hyperbola has a vertex on the r-axis. And a hyperbola in a standard form can take on one of two forms. There's subtraction, and either the b squared term could be first, and the r squared term could be first. And looking at the equation tells you the form of the hyperbola. If the b squared term is first, the vertex will be on the b axis. This represents red army being wiped out. If the r squared term is first, the vertex is on the r axis. Axis. This represents blue army being wiped out. So to decide which army is going to win, we have to figure out which of these two forms the hyperbola has. The trick we're going to use here is the same as a trick we used when we were studying the SIR model. And that is to ignore time and just look at the relationship that R and B have with each other using parametric derivatives. Once we have that dB with respect to dr equals this, it is a matter of an instant to separate our variables and the matter of another instant to integrate both sides of this equality. Yeah. Mm. 
we can get rid of these one half terms. In particular, we can multiply both sides of this equality by two. And because an arbitrary constant of integration, this k times two is still an arbitrary constant of integration, we can write to this. Subtract over what is a k? I'm not using function notation here, but b and r are both functions of time. I'll let time be zero. And I'll write to be a sub zero in the place of B of zero. Likewise, R and that gives me. this equation. And the sign of the right-hand side of this equality, that is to say whether this is positive or negative, determines the victory of the battle. Consider the situation where this is positive. I'm going to divide both sides of this equality by the right-hand side. And I am going to finish rewriting this so that it is in the form, the standard form of a hyperbola. Here we are. I just divided this B into the denominator, divided this R into the denominator, and rewrote these positive denominators as a square root squared. This is a hyperbola in its standard form. This B is first. This R is being subtracted. So we look like this. If the hyperbola looks like this, it hits the B axis. That is to say, R becomes zero. Red army is wiped out. Blue army wins. And I'll just, I won't go through the details, I'll just write down that if instead of being a positive, this is negative, the situation is reversed and red. Army will be victorious. And why is that? If this is negative, then when we divide both sides by it, this will become positive, 
and this will become negative. That is to say, dividing both sides of this equality by a negative number will flip your term. So the negative becomes positive and the positive becomes negative. And that then gives you a hyperbola that looks like this. And it's blue army that is wiped out at this point. Let's um, try to make a little sense of this before we um, end this video. Remember that B is the effectiveness of soldiers in Blue Army. It measures things like how well trained Blue Army is and how well equipped Blue Army is. And B sub zero is the size of the Blue Army at the beginning of the combat. So B times B is zero is a measure of the strength of the blue army. If both the size and the effectiveness are large, this product is large. If the size and the effectiveness are small, this product is small. Likewise for red army. Red army wants both of these values to be big, which will make the product big. So when you think in these terms, the statement that if B times B sub zero, is greater than R times R sub zero. Blue army wins. Now well, that's hardly a surprising statement, is it? These products are measures of their strengths and blue army is stronger. The stronger army wins. If red army is the stronger army, then red army wins.